What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. How are you doing? Are you having a good day? Let us know in the comments down below. So today I've got one out of my own personal collection and I looked in here and I actually started to do a little bit of work on it, but I think it's still pretty close to what it was out of the box originally. So this is the AMT Ertl Snap Fast Plus 1997 Dodge Viper. Yes, it is. Viper GTS. This was a car that I always wanted to get a real one of. Back in the day, they had these in a dealership and they had it all roped around. You could actually not go and touch the car because it was a $80,000 car back in the day. So without further ado, let's check out this great model kit. And now let's wind the clock all the way back to 1997 as we check out the new offering from Dodge in the Dodge Viper GTS. On this side of the box, we get to see all the cool components that make up our Snap Fast Plus 1997 Dodge Viper GTS. There we've got our chassis, our wheels, our windshield, all the front components and the body here, as well as our interior. On this side of the box, AMT has given us this wonderful Snap Fast Plus collector card. This is card number 30 in the set for that year and shows our 1997 Dodge Viper GTS. We also have the customer phone line and the licensed Chrysler Corporation logo. Now our model from AMT Ertl is the Snap Fast Plus for the beginner. This is skill level one for ages eight and up. Easy snap twist and glue assembly. Perfect for play or display, a 125th scale model kit. No painting required. Now, let's just remove the box. Oh, before we do that, I noticed something here. White stripes shown are an optional custom application, just so you know. All right, let's pull off the lid and see what's inside here. So right away, we've got our instruction sheet and I'll let Danny the dog show that to you. Now in the past, I was working on this model. Here's our uh, interior components in a bag. So as you can see, I actually did sand down the, the high gloss plastic, but you would get high gloss in here. So here's a bunch of components clicked together showing our car. There's the rear bumper on the bottom and then a chrome parts tree. I've got my wheels and I did assemble the, uh, the actual wheels into the tires there. There's our glass, a decal sheet, which Danny will also show you and uh, many other fine components. So, oh, and here's the blue printer thing as well from back in the day. So now let's clear all this out of the way and Danny will show you those great instructions. Hey everybody, this is Danny the dog back on the street, your so fine canine. And today we're gonna to be looking at the 1997 Dodge Viper Snap Fast Plus instruction sheet. Now right over here we get this wonderful illustration of the Dodge Viper GTS Coupe and a good history of it right down in here. Now down here we also have the Before You Begin instructions and the recommended brushes and tools in order to get you all set up. Now to begin with we have our tire and wheel assembly. So here we've got the left front and the front right and these are directional so right here that's what it's indicating to. And in the back, we've also got the rears. So basically your chrome wheel goes right through the tire. There's no wheel backs like in other kits because this is a snap fast plus. And here we've got a hammer putting our metal axle into that hole. So make sure when you do that, your metal axle is perfectly straight up and down because you could hammer this in at an angle and then you've got a lot of wheel wobble. Now step three down here, we also see our interior assembly. So it tells you all here how to lock it in place and everything. You get a wonderful dashboard, a steering column, a steering wheel. You also get a shift lever. So here it's calling out for some glue. So it's not 100% snapped together, but basically 99.99%. There's our interior tub and our bucket seats left and right, which click into here as well. You'll have to paint the tire detail in here on the trunk just to make it all look right. So here we have step four with the body assembly and you can see it's pretty straightforward. So our body shell is down here, down below. The hood drops in into these two little holes. There's some pegs there. And then our headlights go up in here on some posts as well. Then our front fascia goes in. We also have these driving lamps that go in there. And then we've got our grill divider bar and the front pan. It does call for some glue in here, so just so you know. 
Step five is our body interior assembly. So here we have that completed body and then you put your glass up inside and our completed interior which goes up in there. You'll notice some metal screws in here which will screw into the post down below. There we've got our rear pan popping in place and then our chassis. So we've got the screws putting the chassis together and in the front as well to hold the body on and all this stuff in between. And then we can insert our front wheels into the axle holes and then that completes that. Now step six says body interior assembly, but we've already basically gone through the interior. So we've got our side view mirrors on there. The gas cap goes in there, again a PC glue in. The right and left tail lamps going in place. The left side mirror, our exhaust pipes popping up underneath, and then the license plate holder going in the back. And step seven shows our decal placement. And here we've got these white stripes going on as well as the Cobra emblem. This again is really, really cool. There's our decals there for the front and ones for the back. And there's a license plate in here. You get a choice of one, two, three, or 16. So I'll show those in the end once we get to look at the decal sheet. Blah. So now over to you, Trevor. We want to see those plastic parts. So yeah, show us, man. Well, thank you very much for that lead in, Danny. So let's start with the back half of our body shell. Now I did sand this down just to, uh, cause I want to paint it really. And I needed to get rid of the ultra high gloss plastic that this was molded in. Um, okay, inside here, you can kind of see an example of how glossy that was. So again, it needed to be sanded out. I've removed the uh, mold marks from the roof in here as well. Again, you can see where everything would lock in and pin in the snap together kit. There's some of the control units that are in the car. They're mounted inside the uh, inner fender aprons that we can see. So again, really cool. I used to have the uh, glue together model of this, but I ended up selling it to somebody. There's the side door panels and the little areas where you're going to hook in your mirrors. So here's the front end of the car. And you can also see these nice little air cleaner type insert things in there, as well as these vents on the hood. And this is how it ends up going together. You can see those bigger pins in there. Those would be the ones you screw in, like it said in the instructions. So you'd screw them in up underneath in here. Again, really easy to put together. There's mold marks in here that you can remove later on. And I also have the front bumper clip. So again, you can see just how this looks. There's where the headlights would go up top. So again, that locks in just like that. So once you have it all kind of locked together in the basic end, this is how it ends up looking. So again, you can see the fit is really nice. You got the Viper logo on here. I think the other reason is there was a seam line running in here. So I ended up sanding that off. Up in the back, you can see the nice tail lights and the parking lights are in here as well. So again, this is a really excellent model, a real excellent casting by AMT. Next up, I have the interior bucket. And again, we can see that spare tire molded in place. This would be like a safety wheel. So when you do paint the interior, whatever color, you need to go in and paint this flat black or semi-gloss black in there to represent a tire. Underneath here on the seats, we have mold marks in place, but the seat will cover them. There you've got the dual speakers in the back, as well as the ones in the side of the door. The door trim and handles are really excellent, as is the console in the middle. The mold marks are all up top, so you're going to have to sand those down just so this fits together nicely. But overall, really good. There's a clip-off point on the side. Now, this would also hook into our body up underneath. Just like that. You can see the little pins locked into place back there. And uh, that's what it's going to look like once the body is together with the interior inside. Our next piece of our model is our chassis right here. And again, you can see the long tubes. That's for screwing the whole thing together. There are some mold marks in here, which I don't think really interfere with anything. But, you know, as a safety measure, just cut them down with that number 16 hobby blade. See again underneath, we've got that high gloss black. But here, AMT put a texture in, which makes those inserts look flat black, which does look really nice. You might need to paint the rear axle. I'm not sure. And maybe like the uh, transmission and oil pan underneath here. You'll have to reference some real pictures of the Viper in order to see what it's like. But now if we take this interior bucket here, or sorry, the chassis, 
Then we get our interior with our body. You can now see that the chassis goes into those holes there. Sorry, the interior, I guess, goes in the hole. Whatever it is, goes in the holes. And you can see how nicely all this fits together, even without the bumper and whatever. This is a really excellent snap together kit from AMT. Now a little story on the Vipers. I remember when these were new in the showroom, this car was about $80,000 Canadian back in 90, 1997, which was unheard of. And they used to actually have this all roped off in the dealership and you needed a special key and everything else and there was some security there. So they really didn't want people just to go and sit in the car and all that. It was, you see it from a distance and you bought it outright. Now here we have our remaining red components. So there's our rear bumper lower, our side mirrors, that center bar for the grill, and the front lower bumper valence thing that goes up in here. Here we have our dashboard, and again, this looks really wonderful. It does have the uh, standard transmission, so there's your clutch, your brake, and your gas pedal. The bucket seats look really good. There's our steering wheel, as well as our steering column, and our gear shift lever. And then in the same little baggie is our license plate. Now this has little pins on the back of it, so that would go into the uh, rear bumper spot. Now let's bring this dashboard up to the camera. Again, you can see just how nice that is. Look at all the gauges in there. My camera's really trying to adjust to this. So again, you got that wonderful uh, CD player in there, and then you've got your vents up there for your windows. So really, really wonderful. That ticking is my camera lens slipping. <laughs> Anyway, there is the front bucket seat. Let's let's try to go down here for the camera. So again, look at that nice detail in there. Really wonderful stuff. So now let's carry on and look at some of the other components. Here we have our clear components and we've got our front and rear window. And this again is bridged over with some clear plastic, just like the old promo kits from the 1960s. There we've got our front headlights and then here are those parking lights in clear. And in the back, we've got the rear taillights. Now these are all cast smooth. There's no texture in behind. So what you see is really what you get. Now here we have our chrome parts tree and where all these holes are, are where these wheels would have been. There's our chrome rear tailpipes. And then inside the bag here, I'm not gonna open this because there's our metal axles and our screws inside. So I'll just carefully put that over in the box so I don't lose it. Now I'll also move this, but here you can see if you add a little black paint into the back here, or even drill it out, that would look really good on your tailpipes. There's a little square to peg it in the bottom of the car. So that goes there. Now here we've got two sets of tires and it does look like I spun these to get rid of the uh, seam lines and whatever on the tread. These treads are directional. So they would actually be one on the right hand side, one on the left. And the wider tire is gonna be for the back of the car and the narrow one for the front. Now, as I was saying, these are actually quite simplistic because the uh, wheel, well, should just fit straight into the rubber tire, just like that. Snap in. And anyway, there are the Viper wheels. Now, let's just look at the front here. Can you see the Goodyear lettering? Yeah, you can. And you can also see the little Viper inside on the wheels. So again, really nicely done by AMT and quite the great model to get. And here we have our decal sheet and you can see all the different white stripes in here. There's the little Viper emblems, very tiny. So, uh, and you gotta cut them really close to the image so that you don't have a big blob of decal film on your car. Now here we've got a Colorado license plate that looks like it says Shark Bite. New Mexico in here. We've got a New York Viper as well as just a factory Viper GTS license plate decal. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great video of our AMT Ertl Snapfast Plus 1997 Dodge Viper GTS. And hopefully you can find it. It's a really neat kit to build. As you can see, I kind of got a start on it. I think I just need paint. <laughs> But at any rate, hey, if you need model kits and whatnot, check out our website, www.monster-hobbies.ca. We ship worldwide. Also, if you really like these videos, you can catch them every Friday on this channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with all your friends and family. And until next time, everybody, keep the rubber on the road.